keeping in touch with their relatives whom normally they would not have the opportunity to visit because of work obligations or distance. And in the overwhelming majority of cases, the non-Muslim families, because of love and attachment to the Muslim, accommodates them in every possible way. It would be grossly irresponsible to say that Thanksgiving or any observance of it is prohibited because to do so is to say that people gathering to eat, to be amongst their family and loved ones, and to express their thanks to God is an abomination and something that angers God. To render the holiday and all the practices haram would say that it is evil and abomination and something that Allah hates. Say, my Lord, forbiddeth only indecencies, such of them as are apparent, and such as are within, and sin and wrongful oppression, and that ye associate with Allah that for which no authority hath been revealed, and that ye tell concerning Allah that which you know not. This is what's prohibited, not eating with your family. Thus, when a convert to Islam is now told that eating with his family, visiting his granny or his grandma or his nana, and keeping ties with his family is a shameful, hateful thing to God, he's sending a dangerous psychological message that is antithetical to our faith. To say that doing these things are permissible on other days, but not permissible on the day that it is easiest to accomplish keeping ties goes directly against the standards of our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in fulfilling godly obligation, which was to prefer ease. Allah said this is a middle road. It's not oil from the east or from the west. It's not a right wing, left wing as approach. It's a balanced middle road approach that is easy. No one becomes harsh and strict in the religion without it overwhelming him. That's what the Prophet وسلم, says. And when I meet new Muslims that are with the most rigid people they can find and they are adopting the most stringent and rigid view on every single idea, I tell them you're going to burn out. I tell them, I look them straight in the face and say you're going to burn out. And they're the kind of people that two months later they're not in Islam anymore because they can't handle it. And the Prophet said that, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is easy for scholars from abroad to prohibit something when they have no direct experience upon the matter. This is why we seek to clarify the whole issue of thanksgiving so that people will be upon clarity. And I speak on behalf, I deem by Allah that Sheikh Taha Jabbar Awadwani, my teacher for three years, would be very happy that I'm presenting this. And I have talked to three other scholars that have absolutely, totally agreed with this. Deeds are reckoned according to intentions. These are spiritual principles of thanksgiving. Based upon the hadith, surely deeds are reckoned by intention found in Muslim. There are several Sunan and Quranic injunctions that are found in the observance of thanksgiving such as the Prophet's exhortation upon the believers to feed food. When asked what is the best type of Islam, he replied, feeding food and spreading the salams. And this is found in the 14th chapter of the Holy Quran and the 7th verse. And write these down and share these with people. When people come to tell you and say, I stuck for a lobby. You celebrated Thanksgiving? Show them this stuff from the Quran and tell them to bring you proofs. Yes. Yeah. Spreading the salams is spreading the peace. It's giving the people the greeting, the prayer. May the peace and blessings of Allah be with you. That's what a Muslim does. The Quran says if an idolater comes to you, invite them to the way of Islam. If they don't accept it, take them to a place of safety. The safest place that anybody in the world should ever be is with a Muslim. That is our faith. It's a religion of peace. It's a religion of security. It's a religion of safety. 
Thanksgiving also is marked by gathering with family and strengthening family bonds, which is a praiseworthy act. Whoever believes in Allah in the last day, let him maintain the bonds of kinship. Chapter 16, verse 121 in the Quran. Additionally, it is not prohibited in Islam to visit the homes of your relatives and eat there. It is no fault in the blind, nor in one born lame, nor in one afflicted with illness, nor in yourselves, that you should eat in your own houses, or those of your fathers, or your mothers, or your brothers, or your sisters, or your father's brothers, or your father's sisters, or your mother's brothers, or your mother's sisters, your aunties and your uncles, in other words, or in houses of which the keys are in your possession or in the house of a sincere friend of yours. There is no blame on you whether you eat in company or separately. But if ye enter houses, salute each other, a greeting of blessings and purity as from Allah. Thus does Allah make clear the signs to you that you may understand. Chapter 34 and 61 of the Holy Quran. We have people running around and telling converts that once you become a Muslim, you shouldn't go visit your family anymore. Do you see this in the Quran? No. Satan wanted to tempt Adam, Ali Saddam, and Hawa to something they did not have, the forbidden fruit. And I think this is such a great lesson of this holy day because so often we want what we don't have. Satan is always tempting us to want what we don't have and to want more and more. Perhaps the first sin had something to do with ingratitude, not being grateful, but saying, I want that, that tree. I want from that tree. The void filled by that first bite bites a hold into our soul. And ingratitude will keep seeping away through that hole of ingratitude and cut us off from spiritual blessings. Our families, home, work, and the food we eat apparently do not bring joy to our hearts. Why do I say that? Because we always hear people complaining. We hear people talking about their homes. We hear people talking about their jobs. And they don't talk about those things with a spirit of gratitude, but they are complaining. How many people are unemployed today that would like to have that job that we are complaining about? Doesn't that sound like Satan talking? Ungratefulness produces poison in our hearts and leaves us bitter. In Tafsir, we have seen recently how ungrateful the Israelites were. A pure eye lets the nur of Allah into its soul. Gratitude, shukr, is about expressing thanks and appreciation to those who do any favor to us. Obviously, none can come close to our Creator Allah who gave us everything. As the Quran states, who created you, fashioned you perfectly, and gave you due proportion. Chapter 82, verse 7. As humans, Allah bestowed on us the nature to be grateful. And we should thus express that gratitude not just to Allah, but to the people whom we deal with as well. In many places in the Quran, Allah divides people as being grateful and as ungrateful to motivate us to join the camp of those who are grateful. And I want to just stop here a minute to talk about the people in Mauritius, they are often referred to as the people of Shukr because they always say Shukran Allah. When they drink water, they say Shukran Allah. When they get something, anything, they say Shukran Allah. They are always expressing their gratitude. And that is really the spirit of a Muslim. The spirit of a Muslim is every day is thanksgiving. Every day they are saying Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah. Shukran Allah, Allah Akbar. They are thanking Allah for everything that He has given them.
in one of such verses, Prophet Suleiman said, it's stated in the Quran, then when Suleiman saw it placed before him, he said, this is by the grace of my Lord to test me whether I am grateful or ungrateful. And whoever is grateful, truly his gratitude is for the good of his own self. And whoever is ungrateful, he is ungrateful only for the loss of his own self. Certainly my Lord is rich, free of all wants, and bountiful. Chapter 27, 40. Did you have a question? Having a sense of gratitude is thus a great blessing. It's a na'am. Na'am means blessing or favor, by the way. Or we say na'am for plural. And those of us who instill that sense within themselves not only seek Allah's pleasure, but embody a sense of happiness, relieving us of the many pressures and anxieties. You see, sometimes we fall into traps. We might complain and say, oh, I've got this old car and it has 250,000 miles on it. Son of Alhamdulillah, I have a car. We fall into all kinds of traps. My clothes are old and tattered. Instead of, Alhamdulillah, I've not suffered from the humility of being naked. I'm sick of porridge, but instead of, Alhamdulillah, I have something to eat. And I remember when I used to travel around and raise money for the Gaza Strip and baby mouth. Orphans would have a bowl of porridge. And six or seven or eight of them would share that one bowl with one piece of meat. And they would shred it and say, Shukran Allah, Alhamdulillah. And they didn't know when they'd get their next bowl. They didn't know when they would get their next piece of pita bread. But they were so grateful to Allah. And their little faces would light up with gratitude. The blessings and benefits of gratitude are many. Today we highlight certain important ones that you should recognize and use as a means to motivate that sense within yourself. Gratitude is knowing that whatever we have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Gratitude helps us focus our minds on Allah, something that has become so difficult today on account of life's distractions and delusions and attractions. Gratitude therefore corrects our perceptions by reminding us that everything that happens to us doesn't happen because of its own volition. And thus we shouldn't take matters for granted. In cognitive behavioral therapy called CBT that so many therapists do, we help people change the way that they think because sometimes the way that we think is not in alignment and harmony with reality. We think that the end of the world is happening. But when we really look, that person drove a Lexus to therapy. But if you listen to them talk, the world is ending for them. They have food. They have clothes. They have education. They have all of these things. But we get caught up and our thinking is flawed sometimes. And being grateful, being people of shukr, helps us to get in the right perspective and the right way of thinking. Allah says in the Quran, and whatever of blessings and good things you have, it is from Allah. Chapter 16 and verse 53. He also says, and He found you poor and made you sufficient. Allah has made us sufficient. I don't believe anyone here today is really starving. To my knowledge, no one in this room is homeless. To my knowledge, no one in here had to have help getting in here today. Every one of us had the blessing, the na'am of walking in here on our own today. Every one of us, our blood pressure is around 120 over 80, I guess. I don't see anybody stroking out on me. Everybody's temperature is normal. I don't see anybody that seems to have a fever. Nobody told me they have a fever. Let's therefore constantly remind ourselves of Allah's bounty 
by expressing our gratitude to Him in prayers and at other times. Gratitude helps in warding off punishment from a law. Look, folks, at all the benefits of being grateful. All the benefits of being thankful that I'm pointing out to you. Not recognizing Allah's blessings can prevent us from gaining His pleasure. How many people want to lose the pleasure of Allah? Nope. And when we complain, that's exactly what we do. We know that if Allah were to punish us for our negligence, He would be justified for it. He says in the Quran, if Allah took mankind to task by that which they deserved, He would not leave a living creature on the surface of the earth. But He grants them reprieve. We should be saying Shukran Allah for reprieve. Oh Allah, I thank you because when I pray, I don't pray with Keshua all the time. When I pray, I'm not present with my heart. I'm just doing a ritual, but you are so kind. You continue to bless me. You continue to give me food. You don't punish me. But Allah grants us reprieve. He gives us a break. He cuts us some slack. And to an appointed term. And when their term comes, then verily Allah is ever all seer of His slaves. Chapter 33 and verse 45. At the same time though, Allah provides us a way to escape that punishment by being thankful to Him. He says, why should Allah punish you if you have thanked Him and have believed in Him? And Allah is ever all appreciative of good, all-knowing. Chapter 4, verse 147. Gratitude, therefore, is not an option. And we should clean our hearts to thank Allah for everything that He has provided us. We often talk about the Sunnah, but do we hear people saying that the Sunnah of Islam is to be people of shukr? Do we hear people say that the Sunnah of Islam is to be people of thanksgiving? Do we hear people say that that is a Sunnah? This is a far, it's a commandment, it's a hukum of Allah. Hukum means order or commandment. We are commanded over and over and over again to be thankful. But what do people talk about? Whether you're crossing your hands here, or here, or here, instead of these things that are so important and so foundational to our very relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Gratitude helps us slow down, enjoying what we have, rather than always waiting for the next wish to come true. Gratitude can help us recognize what we already have, that we already have enough of what many people have for long, long been yearning for. We must therefore tame our nafs, our lower selves, our desires, to understand that if we can't find happiness in the blessings that we have today, that we will not be happy with what we get tomorrow. Gratitude is a sense of fulfillment that comes not from wanting more, but rather from a sense of knowing that Allah has already blessed us with what we need. In one hadith, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, if the son of Adam has one valley and one uh, rendition of this hadith is one valley of gold, he, wished, he will wish that he had a second valley of gold or a second valley. If a guy has 1,000 acres of land, he wishes he had another 1,000 acres of land. And if he had two valleys, he would wish that he had a third. The stomach of the son of Adam would be filled only with dust. That is, he is never satisfied. And this is reported by Ahmed. So let's use gratitude to learn to enjoy what we have rather than fretting over what we don't have. Gratitude sought by exercising patience against unlawful desires prevents us from harmful consequences later. This was dressed by Ibn Qayyim, who stated that patience in resisting desires is easier than patience in dealing with the consequences that result from going along with desires. 
When you go along with what is right in a patient manner, it is much easier than trying to be patient after you've done what is wrong. Think about this. Process this, folks. Because it either leads to pain and punishment or it prevents a more complete pleasure. The more we do wrong, the more guilty we feel. And then we have something called cognitive dissonance. What our beliefs say and what we are doing aren't lining up. So we feel guilty and we feel ashamed and we feel embarrassed and we feel humiliated. And that's what this is talking about. Or it cuts off an oncoming blessing. Or it has a negative impact on one's character that will remain. Because deeds have a great impact on one's character and behavior. You see, we even talk in the world of psychology about self-fulfilling prophecies. People that are ungrateful and people that are negative say, I just know if I get my license, I'm going to have an accident. What happens? They have an accident. I just know if I do this, such and such is going to happen. And they create one self-fulfilling prophecy after another because they are ungrateful and their trust is not in the law. Gratitude helps us recognize other people's favor to us. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, through his saying, made it quite clear that expressing our gratitude to Allah by thanking Him also invokes that we thank people who do favors for us. The Prophet Sallallahu said, as narrated by Abu Huraira, He who does not thank people does not thank Allah. And somehow we missed the boat here. Because when I first became a Muslim, I thanked somebody for doing something with me, and they said, stop for Allah, I did it for Allah. That's not the right answer, folks. Yes, I did it for Allah. But we are supposed to thank people. And when people say thank you, we are supposed to gracefully accept that and say you're welcome. It's my pleasure. I did it for Allah. Alhamdulillah. He who does not thank people does not thank Allah. And this is authentic from Ahmed and Tirmidhi. He also said, whoever does you a favor, then reciprocate. I have also was told when I became a Muslim, we don't do something because somebody else did something for us. Listen to the Hadith, folks. Whoever does you a favor, then reciprocate. And if you cannot find anything with which to reciprocate, then pray for him until you think that you have reciprocated him. This is found in Abu Dawood. In another hadith, he said, whoever has a favor done for him and says to the one who did it, Jazakallahu khairan. Has done enough to thank him. Look at that. In the very way that we express gratitude, the name of Allah is there. Jazakallahu khairan. Jazakallahu khairan. MashaAllah. Isn't that beautiful? By Allah we say thank you. And we wish you good stead. Khair is goodness. The words are so beautiful here when we say Jazakallah for khairan. Just those words in our mind are positive thoughts. Are words of gratitude. Let's therefore ensure that we do our part to sincerely thank our families and those who have done good for us. Gratitude isn't about ignoring our problems. On the contrary, gratitude helps us to be patient, accepting of life's trials, and accordingly trains us to seek personal fulfillment with less. Gratitude thus makes us low maintenance in our demands and expectations. This trait reduces our burden on those around us making our company more pleasing to others instead of leaving us always unhappy, more demanding and impossible to please because of unending requirements. How many people in here like to sit at a table with people that complain from the time you see them to the time you leave them? Nobody? 
We should think about that when we start being ungrateful. Are we a blessing to people when we are complaining? Gratitude is going beyond words. <laughs> instead, and instead thinking through our actions. Yes, if you need to empty yourself and talk to someone, I recommend that you talk to a therapist and empty yourself. But don't run around to every single person you meet and, and be ungrateful. If you need to empty yourself, that's healthy spiritually. But that's different than every single person you see you're complaining about your life. Because when you complain about your life, you're complaining about a law. Gratitude is going beyond words. See, it's all about intention. If your intention is to, intent, is to empty yourself so that you are spiritually whole. If your intention that you're talking about something so that you have tuskia, that you have a pure heart, then that's a good intention. But if you are just talking because you are miserable and you are making other people miserable, then what is your intention? You know when you go to talk to people, am I going because I need to empty my heart? I want to be clean before Allah. My intention for complaining is tasawwuf. And I ask each of you to ask yourself, the last time that I had my little complaining session, was it about tasawwuf? Was it about Tazkia or was it about the fact that I was miserable and ungrateful for what I already had? And you can answer that privately. Gratitude is going beyond words and instead thanking through our actions. We see this in the example of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whose sins were forgiven by Allah, although he continued to strive for his pleasure. It was narrated that Aisha said when the messenger of Allah prayed, he would stand for so long that his feet would become swollen. Aisha said, O messenger of Allah, why are you doing this when Allah has forgiven your past and future sin? He said, O Aisha, should I not be a thankful slave? And this is found in Abu Qari and Muslim. Let's therefore pray the extra nawafl as one way to thank Allah for His blessings. And the nawafl for those of you who are new Muslims are the sunnahs. They are extra prayers that you can pray for extra blessings. I call them the war of prayer sometimes. Gratitude helps increase one's blessings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And remember when your Lord proclaimed, if you give thanks by accepting faith and worshiping none but Allah, I will give you more of my blessings. So you see, that's all the more motivation why we should run around and say shukran Allah, alhamdulillah, shukran Allah. Because the more I say shukran Allah, the more blessings I get. Chapter 14 and verse 7. But if you are thankless, verily my punishment is indeed severe. Did you hear that, folks? If you are thankless, my punishment is severe. Chapter 14 and verse 7. Let's therefore make thanking Allah part of our morning and evening remembrance to get more of Allah's blessings in our lives. Gratitude helps us to get the pleasure of Allah in the hereafter. Here's another reason for being grateful for thanksgiving. In paradise, we express our gratitude to Allah for His blessings of entering into paradise. The authentic hadith says that when we get to paradise for three days, all we'll say is Salaam Alaikum, Salaam Alaikum, Salaam Alaikum, Salaam Alaikum for three days. We'll be so happy that all we'll be able to do is just greet each other about peace. Salaam Alaikum, Salaam Alaikum. Imagine that. Abu Abbas al Qurtubi said, Gratitude for blessings, even if they are few, is a means of attaining the pleasure of Allah, may He be exalted, which is the noblest situation of the people of paradise. When the people of paradise say, You, Allah, have given to us what you have not given to anyone among your creations, Allah will say to them, Shall I not give you something better than that? 
They will say, what is it? Have you not brightened our faces and admitted us to paradise and saved us from hell? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, I bestow my pleasure upon you and I will never be angry with you after that. This is Sahih Muslim. So I pray that this Thursday, when you are celebrating Thanksgiving, you will remember all that I said, that I will be on your shoulder, and you'll be hearing what I said about gratitude. Because what's really sad is that sometimes on Thanksgiving Day, people aren't thankful. Isn't that an oxymoron? This turkey is dry. I don't like this food. Why didn't we have this? Why didn't we have that? Oh my God! And then there are the family arguments. And we call it a day of gratitude. I hope that you will remember all the blessings of being grateful from this lecture today. That you will apply them in your life every day, not just Thursday. Because these hukums didn't say once a week. Every single verse that I gave you from the Quran is an order from Allah and it is a daily practice of Muslim. Every single day is thanksgiving for the Muslim. Alhamdulillah. So I say this, if I have offended you, if you don't agree with me, that's okay. There's more than one opinion in Islam. And you're entitled to yours just like I'm entitled to mine. As long as I can verify what I'm saying according to Quran and Sunnah. And as long as you can verify what you're saying. I love you all for the sake of Allah. We finished a little early today. If you would like to pray at 1 o'clock. I was in 13th gear today. We actually did more slides today than we usually cover in the same day. Yes. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, stop. I have a comment actually. I was reading a book. It's called In the Early Hours. And uh, it's written by a fairly well-known scholar from England. But I was very surprised to learn that in the Quran, uh, oftentimes the word shukr, which means gratitude, is opposite, its antonym is kufr, which means disbelief. Yes. Because I would have thought that the opposite of gratitude is ingratitude, but gratitude is such an important concept in Islam that the antonym for gratitude in the Quran is disbelief. What is the thing that we should be most grateful for? Being called to the truth of Islam. This is the greatest thing that anyone in the world can have, is to be called to the truth of Islam. To be freed from the bondage of incorrect knowledge. To be freed from the bondage of confusion and from perplexity. Because those of us who came out of other traditions were perplexed. Some of us didn't even want to live when we were so complex. I'm speaking for myself. So there's no greater honor. There's nothing for which we can be more thankful for than being called to Islam. To have peace. To have the ability to be secure and to surrender to the one God. Yes, brother. I think it's also important to mention, too, because you had mentioned at one time about animals. You know, animals kill just what they need, and that's it. They don't, they don't get greedy. They don't overdo it. And, you know, even with society nowadays, you know, you talked about mission trips that you've done in Africa. Our society has just gotten to the point where it's just, even with the cell phone, if the cell phone doesn't work fast enough, it's, it's just not meeting our standards. We've just kind of become spoiled, and I think sometimes it's important for us to kind of take a step back and kind of look at our lives, and we should really, really be thankful for what we got. There's people out there that have nothing. And Especially you know, compared to what we got. In 1980, when I went to South Africa, you could drive about 10 miles out of Cape Town and they didn't have telephones. And this was 1980. So yes, we, we really have so much to be thankful for. And many of you that know me know that my telephone, I pay the bill, so I choose what I want to use. It does not run my life. I don't answer it unless I want to answer it because I'm the one that's paying for that phone. I'm not a slave to my phone. I'm a slave to one, and that's a law. And you know what? I've never missed it, an emergency. No Muslim has ever not gotten in touch with me in time. And yet there are people that they, the first thing they do when they come in, they're addicted. they got to check that answer. How many people have called me that I don't know about?